Hey guys, Suze here. Welcome back to another Keto Dinner Ideas video. If you're new here, we make these videos once a week and we try to cover four different recipes each week to give you a little inspiration to get in the kitchen and get your keto meal prep and batch cooking on. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and join the crew. Let's get into the video. First up, I made these awesome cast iron top sirloin steaks with loaded cauliflower mash. Now, originally this cauliflower mash was gonna be twice baked faux avocado and cauli potatoes, like baked potatoes. You can see my avocados were bad. We kept it moving by adding two cups of steamed cauliflower to a food processor with four tablespoons of butter. I melted on the stove top and then let cool back down a little. To that, I'm adding a fourth of a cup crumbled bacon that I did in the air fryer, about an eighth a teaspoon pepper, a uh, half a teaspoon salt, and a fourth of a teaspoon onion powder. I'm also adding about a tablespoon of chopped green onions and a tablespoon of heavy cream. Once I got it blended, I'm just taking that same pot I had my butter melted in, and I'm gonna add that all in and stick it on a burner over low heat while I do my steaks. So to get started on my steaks to a cast iron skillet, I'm taking a few tablespoons of butter. You see my steaks here. We actually bought top sirloin cap steak this time because it was a lot less expensive at Costco, and we could get our hands on it. It's meats and kind of short supply to get. I marinated it for 24 hours in Worcestershire sauce and minced garlic, and then I'm just adding some salt and pepper to one side of it. I have my oven preheating to 350. Once I get my butter nice and hot, medium high heat, I'm putting my steak seasoning side down. I'm gonna let these sear without moving them for about three and a half minutes. Going ahead and adding some salt and pepper to this side of my steaks as well. And after about three and a half minutes, I'm flipping those over and just putting them right back into the same place on the pan. Now I'm gonna add another tablespoon of butter to each one of my steaks and pop this whole pan in the oven for five minutes at 350. After that was done, I let my steaks rest a little while before I serve them up with a loaded cauliflower mash topped with a little bit more sour cream cheese green onions and bacon. And if you have never tried top sirloin cap steak, try it out. This was so tender and delicious and I will definitely be doing this again. Next up, I threw together a cheesy zucchini chicken casserole. I will link this recipe down below by a low carb delish. To start with, I just took a couple chicken breasts and cooked them in the Instapot with salt and pepper put them in a big old bowl and use my hand mixer to shred them up. If you've never shredded chicken this way, do yourself a favor and try it out. It's stupid easy and just gets it done super quick. Next up, I took an eight ounce block of cream cheese room temperature to a separate dish with a fourth a teaspoon pepper, fourth a teaspoon salt. Took the same hand mixer with the shredded chicken still stuck to it and creamed that together. Then I added three large eggs and creamed all of that together as well. When that was nice and mixed, I went ahead and folded in about two cups of shredded chicken. And to that, I added about three fourths a cup of sharp shredded cheddar cheese and about half a cup of mozzarella cheese. And I'm just mixing that together really well before adding a fourth of a cup chopped onion. Once I have that incorporated, I am taking an oval casserole dish, spraying it with some olive oil cooking spray, and adding about two cups of sliced zucchini that I steamed in the microwave for about three minutes. Next time, I'll probably skip that step. Now I'm adding my chicken mixture and big dollops and just kind of mashing it into the zucchini. And once I have that spread evenly, I'm adding about another fourth of a cup shredded cheddar and fourth of a cup mozzarella before popping the whole thing in the oven at 350 for 40 minutes. Here's what it looks like when it comes out of the oven, all nice and bubbly and brown. And here it is plated up. This was great. I liked it better the night of than I did stored and reheated just because I like my zucchini to be a little bit firmer. And that's why I say next time, I probably will not steam my zucchini before I make this, just so that when I reheat the leftovers that they're also still a little firm in texture. Next up, my husband made these awesome, awesome gordita knockoffs. Oh my gosh, these were so good. So to start with, he browned a pound of hamburger meat. And to that, he added your typical taco seasonings. This is some that we already had pre-mixed, but you know, lots of cumin, some chili powder, some paprika, some garlic powder, some onion powder, some oregano, ah, salt, pepper. I may have forgot some stuff, but 
add what you use for your for your tacos. Okay, once again, the taco seasoning mixed in, he went ahead and got started on his gorditas. He actually adapted a recipe from Primitive Palette, which I will link down below. It actually makes 12 servings, but he um, instead switched it to four so he could get thicker gorditas, and he used a blender instead of a processor. So to start with, he took four ounces of pork rinds, put those into a blender with an eight ounce package of room temperature cream cheese, eight eggs. I know eggs are so hard to come by right now. I didn't know he was using eight for this, but it was worth it because it turned out really, really good. Tablespoon granulated garlic and a tablespoon ground cumin, and he just blended that all together. And then in a skillet over medium high heat, he is just plopping in some of his batter. Like I said, he did this in about four different portion sizes instead of making 12 six inch thin tortillas that you just quick fry. Um, he made the thicker gorditas, so he only made about four with this amount of batter. And he just put it in there and cooked it for about two minutes, I think, until it started getting the little bubbles all in it. You probably know the drill, kind of like cooking pancakes, and flipped it. He was very dissatisfied that it got dark so quickly, but let me tell you, it had nothing to do with the taste. The taste was absolutely spectacular. This was the best keto fat kid food that my husband's probably ever made for us. It was so, so, so delicious. And with all the eggs, it was super satisfying. And to serve these, he did do a little Taco Bell hot sauce to keep it authentic to the gordita, a little sour cream, some shredded lettuce, and some extra sharp cheddar cheese. And he played it two here for pitchers, but we only had one each because these were Phil Ling. And I don't even want to think about how many calories are actually in them, but so so worth it, so delicious. The last meal of the week, I threw together a quick shrimp and veggie stir fry over medium high heat to a skillet. I'm adding a tablespoon of avocado oil, about a tablespoon of butter, a heaping teaspoon of minced ginger, and a heaping teaspoon of minced garlic. I'm gonna stir those around and cook that for about a minute before adding just the leftovers of frozen wild-caught Key West shrimp from Costco. They're not local to us, but they are local to the East Coast, so I love that. I had about 12 ounces left, so I stuck those in here, and I'm only gonna cook these about a minute on each side. Once I have them in the pan cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and add some sea salt and some pepper, and then flip those. And while they're cooking on the other side, I'm adding some chili garlic sauce. This is the one I use. I'll try to link some of this down below in case you wanna order it online. And I'm just gonna stir that around for about 45 seconds, get it all mixed together before removing the shrimp and all of its seasonings, juices, sauce to a separate dish while I get started on the veggies. Now for these veggies, my husband had his eye on some frozen veggies. Produce is a little hard for us to get our hands on right now to get good produce. So we've been doing even more frozen veggies than usual and he wanted th this mix that had eggplant added to it. So it's eggplant, zucchini, uh, red peppers, and green peppers. And it's just a pretty small package of that. I added that to the pan along with a quarter of a cup of liquid aminos. And I'm letting that get up to a bubbling simmer before turning my heat down and adding the shrimp back to it. And then I'm just gonna toss this to make sure my shrimp are heated all the way back through, and that is it. Like, this was the simplest, quickest, like I said, just a really quick, like, let's use what we have left over in the freezer stir fry. There you go, guys. Here it is all plated up. You can see all of the chunks of minced garlic in this. This was absolutely good, and that chili garlic sauce gave it just the right amount of spice, which I love. All right, guys, there you have it. That's this week's keto dinner ideas. What's for dinner on keto? Easy keto dinner recipes for you to try out for your keto meal prep and batch cooking. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any recipe ideas you'd like to see us try. Subscribe to our channel. Share the video with your friends. The more engagement it gets, the more encouraged we are to keep filming uh, what we're cooking at our house for keto dinners. Till next time, bye guys.